Hello from the Clio Cloud Conference 2018 in New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm Lawrence Coletti. I'm Victor Lee. I'm Jack Newton. I'm Ryan Govro. And we're on the road with Legal Talk Network. And we're back. Thank you so much for joining us on the road. It's a pleasure to be here in the Big Easy. Today, we're talking with the founders of Clio at their Clio Cloud Conference. I have Jack Newton and I have Ryan Govro joining us today. Welcome, guys. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. And also have longtime friend uh, Victor Lee from ABA Journal joined us today. Thanks, Lawrence. Good to see you. So we are sponsored, so I just want to make a quick little sponsor message. We'd like to thank our longtime sponsor and friend, Clio, whose conference is being featured in these series of podcasts. And if you like what you're hearing, why not check out their conference for real, along with 1,500 other legal professionals at next year's Clio 2019, their Clio Cloud Conference. For more information, visit cliocloudconference.com. That's C-L-I-O, cloudconference.com, C-L-I-O, cloudconference.com. So... Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. I know you're super busy, but this is the sixth Clio Cloud Conference. You guys are at your 10-year anniversary, Mark. And so tell us a little bit about that, just as an opener. Yeah, well, it feels momentous, to be honest. Six years ago, we had our first Clio Cloud Conference with 200 attendees. Six years later, we're one of the biggest legal technology conferences on the planet with over 1,500 attendees on the ground here in New Orleans celebrating our 10 year anniversary this week, October 1st, we launched Clio back in 2008 and celebrated that moment with our staff and our, our customers over the course of this week. And, and again, looking back, it's incredible thinking, you know, in 10 short years, we went from our first customer, Catherine Marino Riesman, who's actually still a customer and is, is attending the conference this week, to now over 150,000 legal professionals that depend on Clio every single day to get their job done. Team Clio, our, our team back in Vancouver, uh, and across our worldwide offices has grown to more than 300 employees. Uh, and to be announcing everything we did at the Clio Cloud Conference today feels like we're fueled up and ready to go for another decade in transforming the practice of law for good. Yeah, I think Jack put it well, but uh, you know, I think 10 years ago when Jack and I launched Clio, we never really imagined that we'd be leading the, the charge in the legal industry in the way that we are and that, you know, that the Clio product and the Clio team would have grown to the size that it has, but we're tremendously honored uh, to be here and you know, proud of the Clio Cloud Conference and what it's become and, and the team behind it. So super excited to be here. So I think this is my fourth Clio Cloud Conference. And I went to two in Chicago, and then I think this is the first time I've been to New Orleans, so actually three in Chicago. So it's been kind of cool to see how the conference has grown and like just seeing how things have changed over these last few years. Obviously, it's different for you guys since you're on the ground floor, but talking about some of the big announcements that you had today on stage, like for the listeners, just what are some of the highlights of the announcements that you guys had? Yeah, your, I think you, know, you can think about what we announced in the keynote as fitting into one large umbrella, which is really that we, we're ushering in what we're describing as this post-practice management era of technology for legal. And we think that future is going to be described as focused around the client experience. And we think lawyers and the technology they use need to be more focused on the client. And we want Clio to be a catalyzing and foundational part of that shift in the industry and the way it thinks about the delivery of legal services. So to that end, we've we've rebranded the category that we're in and we're launching what we described actually as a new category which is client experience platform for legal. And we are going to be growing Clio into a much more comprehensive product that helps lawyers cater to their clients in a more effective way and address the client's needs over their entire journey through their interaction with a lawyer, all the way from awareness and consideration through to delivering work product, collaborating, paying a bill, and finally, hopefully, the client becoming an advocate and a referral source. And that full life cycle is something we are now laser focused on. And we are really excited today to announce uh, accelerating that vision, kicking off that vision with the acquisition of Lexicata. So Lexicata is now a Clio company, and we're gonna be incorporating their core technology into a product that we're announcing today, giving early access to all the folks on the ground at ClioCon to uh, what we're describing as Clio Grow, a brand new product, and we'll be launching that officially in early 2019. So transforming the legal profession for good, uh, that was something that you guys discussed last year. And I think 
one of the most uh, rewarding things about coming to this conference, it's not just about Clio, it's not just about you guys. You guys put on meaningful content, not just for managing your practice in different ways that don't have anything to do with your software platform, but also ways, rewarding ways that are immediately, you know, immediate takeaways for a practitioner to come out here. But you know, recently I've noticed as you've upped your game at this conference, you're bringing a meaningful content for the person. And so I wanna just bring up your work with the California Innocence Project, just kinda discuss what you guys are doing with them. Yeah, so I think uh, you know, ten years ago when Jack and I got into the business, we, you know, originally set out with a you know pretty modest goal, which was to you know help lawyers do a better job of kind of like managing their cases. Um, but I think over the last ten years, we've realized that we have a, a much more sizable impact that we can make in the legal industry, and and that you know our, our mission is really transformed from just providing a software product to trying to bring about transformative change in the legal industry. And with that, I mean, we, we kind of realized that our proverbial kind of dent in the universe could be that we could help provide a solution around the fact that the legal industry struggles with access to justice. And, and so, you know, we know that our software product can help projects like the California Innocent Project um, provide people who are underrepresented in the world and not able to access uh, the legal representation that might help their situation. And so as a part of our philanthropic initiative, we give away uh, over $15 million a year worth of Clio access. And the California Innocence Project is one of the, the beneficiaries of that giving initiative. And it's super rewarding and inspiring for the Clio team to see that the product that they you know, pour their heart and soul into every day um, is having such a kind of profound impact on the ground um, you know, and, and helping people who have been wrongly convicted receive an opportunity at exoneration. And that's something that's playing out not just in the California Innocence Project, it's, it's playing out across the industry and, and with all of the you know, legal clinics and pro bono law firms and, and others that are, that are providing uh, access to justice. So one of the things that you know, Jack and I and the entire Clio team are super passionate about is making sure that you know, a part of our mission and part of the legacy that we leave behind is that you know, Clio is, is helping to, you know, our, our kind of lasting impact in the legal industry is, is helping to make sure that those who are underrepresented are able to find their way to legal representation. Well, to kind of piggyback off that, because I think you had mentioned in your keynote, Jack, I think you used the metaphor of like a glacier where, you know, you just see the top and you, you, know, you don't know how much is at the bottom or it could be right. a, a huge amount at the very bottom that is a potential untapped market for lawyers. What do you think lawyers should be doing as far as if they do want to try to tap that access to justice market or try to close the gap? Uh, what do you think lawyers should be doing? And does it go beyond just, you know, getting free software from uh, companies like yourself? Right. So I think there's bridging the access to justice gap you know, the way I, I framed it in the keynote is really about actually addressing this product market fit problem that legal has, where there's this unbelievably huge untapped market. Again, the statistics, the World Justice Project did this really interesting survey last year and identified the fact that 77% of legal problems are not being addressed by a lawyer helping consumers resolve those problems. And I think when we think about the US legal market, which has $300 billion of spend annually and think about three quarters of the market opportunity lying below the waterline, that implies there's on the order of a trillion dollars of untapped demand in the marketplace. Now admittedly, some of those legal services are going to be delivered on a lower cost basis or a fixed fee structure, but even if you assume that the, the underlying economics are going to be delivered at half of the billable rate of current legal services or even a quarter we're still talking about a multi-hundred billion dollar untapped market opportunity. And the position I tried to advocate for in the keynote was that we need to be thinking about delivering legal services in a different way and bridging this access to justice gap, which is not an externality that somebody needs to solve for lawyers. It's something lawyers need to solve for themselves. And it's a mindset and a technology shift they need to make. And the mindset shift they need to make is to be ruthlessly client focused in how they're designing and delivering their legal services. And that's where I think there's an enormous opportunity for the market to grow. It's not a zero sum game. We can let entrants like LegalZoom and Avo Legal Services into the marketplace without worrying about it being a zero sum game where they're cannibalizing work for existing lawyers. I think they're actually gonna have the kind of effect that the Kindle had on physical book sales, which was actually a complimentary effect and got people reading more overall. They did not hurt physical book sales. Similarly, Uber helped create a market where people are riding ride shares, including taxis, more than they ever have in the past. There's a lot of examples of disruptive models, models where 
people are innovating on the business delivery model, actually tapping into a brand new untapped market opportunity, and it's clear as day that that opportunity exists in legal. We just need innovative lawyers to stand up and go and grab that market opportunity. And so before we get into some of the upgrades for this year, I did want to bring up the Deloitte Award. That was something that you discussed, Jack, during your keynote. So I just right. wanted to, if we can, make the listeners aware of what that is. Yeah, it's something we've, we were recognized with over the last year. We've been lucky enough to enjoy a lot of accolades around the culture and performance of the Clio team over the year. We've been named to the, the Deloitte Fast 500 of fastest growing companies in North America. Seen a lot of success on that front. But one of the awards that we received in the last year that I think we're especially proud of is this Deloitte Best Managed Company Award, which recognizes us not just for financial performance, but for our overall business quality and the strength of some of our business processes, how we develop employees, our hiring process, our goal setting and execution process. It's a number one, a highly selective award. Most companies do not win it in their first year of applying. They get feedback and try two or three times to win. We actually were recognized with this award in the first year we applied for it. So uh, for Ryan and myself, I know it's something that we're, we're enormously proud of and one of the, the award we hold in highest regard. So I'm going to read something off Twitter, which I know is always dangerous, but um, <laughs> uh, there was one tweet that... that it's I not a mean it, tweet, is it? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a tweet that wondered whether um, Clio's acquisition of Lexicata means that they're possibly positioning themselves as a law firm in the future with their focus on the customer, but also trying to create demand from a different market. Now, obviously, LegalZoom has kind of done something similar where they acquired law firms in the UK and whatnot. And obviously, there are rules about that here in the United States. But like, kind of looking in the future, what are sort of like the plans for Clio? Like, is there a possibility that something like this could happen or is there something else kind of in the grapevine? So becoming a law firm is certainly not something that's on our, our short or medium term roadmap. Our model is very much a belief that the lawyers that are out there need the right kind of technology and the right kind of education, the right kind of data to deliver services to the marketplace. And our view has been Clio should be the platform enabling them to do that, both on the education and the technology front. And that's what our, our next decade of growth will look like, is equipping innovative law firms with the best data, the best education, and the best technology to be laser focused on their clients and to tap into that unbelievable market opportunity that's sitting out there. Yeah, our, our view is certainly that we don't want to disintermediate our, our clients, um, that we believe that like Clio is the platform that should power a modern legal practice and that our entire focus and our kind of reason for being as an organization is that we want to, you know, we want to transform the legal industry as we've talked about uh, and we want to make lawyers happier in their work and more productive and we want them to be able to provide really great client experiences. And so that's, that's really what's driving everything behind Clio and all of our product innovation. So last substance question, uh, Jack and Ryan, uh, I know that you guys have been making a lot of upgrades this year, so I want to pay homage to the Clio users. Let's, uh, if you can, can we announce some of the new developments that your clients and customers can expect? Yeah, I'll, I'll maybe run down what got the most applause in the keynote from highest to lowest. I think uh, there's enormously positive response to the Clio launcher, which allows customers to very easily interact with the documents that have stored in Clio's document cloud. Uh, eliminates all of the back and forth of saving a document locally and then re-uploading it to Clio. Uh, makes the experience seamless and effortless, which is rewarding for us to deliver on that kind of theme. Everything around Clio payments, making it easy for law firms to correct payments by credit cards. And as mundane as it sounds, one of the easiest ways that law firms can innovate is by providing things like payment plans. Rather than paying you my $2,000 or $5,000 invoice in a lump sum, which is not possible for a lot of consumers and even some businesses stage that out in a way where you're paying me a thousand dollars a month for five months you're still getting paid you're creating positive cash flow for your business and you're making your legal services so much more accessible and it's easy things like that and people you could see in the audience actually really understand the kind of value things like clio payments deliver to them a few things on the roadmap we talked about that there's a lot of excitement around is full text search in Clio's document management system. So you'll be able to, to get a comprehensive download of every document and every search term that's identified within your Word files, PDF files that are stored in Clio, which I think is a huge win. 
and Ryan, my, my head's still spinning from this morning. Was there anything I, I missed that? Uh, no, I think the only thing you you didn't touch on was the the Lexicata integration, and so um, you know. Oh yeah, we acquired Lexicata. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, that, that got so obviously, um, you know, helping helping customers, <laughs> you know, build the growth aspect of their business. So helping them with client intake, helping them track and, and manage the metrics and the KPIs that are important to their law firm, understand how how they're performing, manage their pipeline. Something that you know we're we're really passionate about at Clio is trying to help lawyers think about their business like entrepreneurs do and make sure that they're managing their pipeline and kind of effectively growing their business and developing that into hopefully healthy client relationships. So that's, I think, the, uh, the biggest announcement. So I can see the cautionary eye of Sasha behind me. I can feel it. And so I know you guys need to move on to your next appointment. And so just real quick, you know, for our listeners out there, they're hearing about this event, they're hearing about the Clio Cloud Conference. How can they learn more? How can they contact you? So the, the FOMO is real. If this sounds like it's exciting and the buzz in the background uh, is something you want to experience, come to Clio Cloud Conference next year in 2019. It's going to be phenomenal. That's the best way to get plugged into the innovation that's happening on the ground here. It's not just about the keynote. It's not just about the presentations, but it's about the attendees and the kind of energy they have and, and that's being created on the ground in terms of you know, everyone here reimagining what the future of law looks like. And in terms of catching up on today's announcements, check out our blog. We've got an inventory of everything that we announced today at clio.com slash blog. We've got the Legal Trends Report, which we dropped today. Another major announcement that I think we neglected to mention in the interview, our annual Mary Meeker Internet Trends-like report, where we drop uh, some serious knowledge on the legal industry, has been released today and is available for free at clio.com as well. So clio.com is the best way for me personally hit me up on Twitter at Jack underscore Newton. Yeah, and I'm available at uh, Ryan.govro. Can you help our American uh, listeners with the spelling of Govro? Yeah, so that's uh, uh, more complicated than it should be. <laughs> it's uh, R-I-A-N dot G-A-U-V-R-E-A-U. Yeah, so feel free to hit me up or follow me on Twitter. Would uh, love to have more followers. And, and as Jack mentioned, I mean, the, the elation, the energy, it's positively palpable. Uh, this is not your parents' legal technology conference. Uh, this is a, a new kind of conference, and it's something that every legal professional should certainly uh, put on their agenda for uh, attendance in 2019. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we've reached into the road for this episode, but I want to thank Jack Newton. I want to thank Ryan Govro and my co-host, Victor Lee, for joining us today. And if you like what you heard today, please find us and rate us in Apple Podcasts. We'll see you next time for another episode of On the Road with Legal Talk Network. If you'd like more information about what you've heard today, please visit LegalTalkNetwork.com. Subscribe via iTunes and RSS. Find us on Twitter and Facebook. Or download our free Legal Talk Network app in Google Play and iTunes. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer. Thank you.